My girlfriend, uh, my girlfriend and I have been together for over a year now, and uh, where I met her was weird because I met her at a job, and her job was that she used to be a stripper, like she used to be, and it's weird to even say I'm dating a stripper because I didn't even know I had that kind of game. You know what I mean? Like, I walked into a strip club and I left with a stripper. That's like going to a zoo and leaving with a tiger. Like, hey, shit, I am the best hunter here. I'm gonna take this bad boy home and stuff it. Anyways. But my girl's really funny though. My girlfriend's really, really funny. Like she told me the other day, she goes like, you know, being a stripper is a lot like being a comedian. And I was like, how is that? They're like, well, we're both on stage because we have daddy issues. I'm like, all right, good point. <laughs> you know, like, this never called you, mine either, good. It is, stripping and being on stage, you know, and, and you know, being a comic is kind of the same. But the biggest difference between stripping and being a comedian is this, is nobody wants to see a comedian their first night on stage. Dudes want to see a stripper their first night on stage. If you hear a DJ go like, this is her first night on stage, I'm gonna be like, ooh, recently broken spirit. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be so cute. That's gonna be so cute. You want to see a comedian like 20 years in, that's when he's good. Like Chris Rock, 25 years in. You don't want to hear a DJ go, the next stripper coming up, she's been stripping since the Reagan administration. Her pussy's so wet, they call her trickle down economics. And just like that, she only fucks black people. Keep it cool. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank God it was black folk in this room during that joke. <laughs> Why people were like, oh, too real. <laughs> that's stuff. I love talking about race, and these are two reactions. When you do a joke like that like about race, black people are like, yo, that nigga real. And white people are like, ooh, yeah, too, too real. Too. <laughs> Please joke about Uber, because that's what we know. Like, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> this, is, this is real. I asked my girlfriend. My girlfriend and I, we talk about our jobs too, a lot. And she goes, like, what's the scary about not being a comedian? And I'm like, well, the scariest thing is you go on stage and nobody will laugh at you. And I go, what's the scariest thing about being a stripper? And this is true. This is exactly what she told me. This is true. She goes, like, honestly, not a lot of people think about this. The scariest thing about being a stripper, serial killers. <laughs> think about that shit. Because serial killers always go after strippers. That's how they get started, right? Think about it. Serial killers always go, they always go animals, strippers, and then people. That's how they go. That's how they get started. You go after people. That's, that's the evolution of a serial killer. We right? move on to regular folk. I didn't even think about that. Like, I didn't even think about that. Because we don't care about when a stripper goes missing. We don't. We don't give a fuck when they go missing. We should. We should care about our strippers a little bit more. Like, we should. Like, Michelle Obama should have a sign that said, bring back our strippers. Like, we need to. Because if we went after, if we went after strippers missing, like we do everybody else, we'll catch serial killers. So if a stripper goes missing, there should be like a police officer that comes out and he calls like a glitter alert or something like that. <laughs> Listen, we're looking for Jasmine. She's been missing for two weeks. We need to find this hoe before, before this guy who ever took her starts moving to people we care about, like suburban white women. So be on the lookout for Jasmine. We need to find it. Damn, I love performing for the black people. I swear to God, I swear to God it's the best of my life. She made a lot of money, though. She made a lot of money stripping. She did. She quit for me, so she's not good at making decisions. But anyway, I love her, but I'm not even getting people to do this shit. Look how good I'm doing. You know what I mean? That sucks. She made, she made so much money. Girls, girls judge women like that. You know, oh, she was a stripper. She was a stripper. She got paid to show her titties. I'm like, yeah. Think about any time you show your titties for free. Like, think about it. You gotta pay $200 every time you show your titties to a dude. A lot of you be able to pay off your mortgage and show them. Like, Damn, I still got paid to show my titties. <laughs> my girl's sexually advanced, man. She is. So the, so the time, like, the first time we had sex, it was scary. It was scary because I've never been with a woman who's that sexually confident in her sexuality, man. Like, the first time we had sex, she was like, What do you want me to do to you? And I was like, I don't know, I want you to, I want you to suck my dick. And she was like, Good, because I'm like an asshole what I do. And I was like, Woo! I was so shocked that I turned to like an old Southern Baptist and was like, what? I've never. <laughs> Child, is the house of the Lord. We don't do that here. <laughs> and she did it and it was amazing, man. It was. <laughs> you ever thumb up your brother? Yeah. No. <laughs> Dude, I, I saw colors I've never seen before. Like, that was. You know what's crazy though? Because, like, when she did it, she hit my butt and then she put a thumb on my butt. And then for some reason, I turned into the rapper Little John. Because I was like, what? Yeah! Okay! And 
Give a big, roaring round of applause for Todd McComas. <laughs> 